could you briefly explain um, why do you want to have a high aerobic threshold? Yeah, uh, it's a great question. Uh, so basically, when we're trying to do any sort of activity that we would consider to be an endurance activity uh, with regard to you know, aerobic fitness, it, we're really talking about anything that's going to last longer than several minutes. Uh, anything less than you know, three to four minutes, we can rely pretty heavily on uh, what we call our anaerobic capacity. That is our ability to put forth a high effort uh, not relying on, on oxygen, basically. So there are parts, there are systems in our body that can uh, operate anaerobically, that is, without oxygen. But that's really only in a very short time frame. And, and even in that three to four minute range, there is an, we have to use oxygen, right? You can't hold your breath for that long. You have to you know, take in oxygen to be able to fuel. But particularly when we get over four minutes you know, into you know, 30 minutes, an hour, and then obviously so on and so forth, it gets even more so, we rely on these systems in our body that uh, utilize oxygen and burn fat as fuel. And that, those are part of our aerobic system of energy. Uh, and, and how we metabolize energy to, to turn it into fuel. So essentially, the better we can, the better our bodies can take in oxygen and, and use it uh, and, and therefore burn fat as a fuel, the longer we're to go. And, and in conjunction with that, when, when that system is working really well, when we have a really robust aerobic system, we're also able to be moving faster at those efforts. Uh, and so m most of your listeners can probably remember a time uh, either recently or sometime in the past when they maybe didn't have that uh, strongly developed aerobic system and they would go out and, and try to exercise at a low intensity. And, and you have to move pretty slow, you know, right? I mean, you can't, you can't maintain an aerobic effort, you know, keep a low heart rate and move very fast. Uh, but, but also perhaps some of your listeners are now at the point where they have a good aerobic system and they can move at a pretty good clip. You can move uphill, you know, fast hiking or even running and still maintain an aerobic heart rate because you develop what's known as economy. Just like in a car, you can use less fuel to go farther and, and, and faster. So that's what we're trying to achieve with developing an aerobic, uh, a good aerobic system, a high aerobic threshold so we can work we can we can go faster. We can do more work uh, while still relying on the same fuel composition. Yeah, and that's where I put a a little goal for myself for the coming winter, um, and it's starting to look doable. Uh, and it's just to do a, a thousand meters of ski touring within two hours uh, in the at the aerobic threshold, uh, which I find important, just so I don't need to recover too much and can shred it. Uh, good and then do it again the next day um, yeah. and on Sunday yeah. so two days ago um, almost was that October 10th uh, we had gotten some snow like a week ago and I got to do my first little mountaineering thing for the season or since the 4000 meter project back in June um, did a 1200 vert and it felt really easy and for the first half I think we were doing about 550 vertical meters per hour at 130 to 136 beats per minute, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, so mm -hmm. a bit under. And I was like, damn, I'm uh, kind of uh, at my goal there or slightly above it. But obviously with much less gear, the ski gear weighs quite a lot, so it would be harder uh, to yeah. do on snow. But I was like, yeah, there's hope for this goal for this winter. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and, and that's – it's a really good point that you made there as well that uh, you can – you can see how you're getting toward your goal with, with movement on your feet and being able to attain a certain vertical gain per hour, but recognizing that when you want to do that uh, ski touring, you need to adapt to the additional loads that ski touring requires. You've got, you know, you have, you know, one and a half kilos on each foot, basically, that you're having to drive uphill and you've got a pack on and, and you've got resistance of the snow. And so there's these different pieces when we think about training and we think about how we need to develop a training plan to prepare you for your specific goal, you have to consider, well, wh what are the challenges that I'm coming up against, right? So if you're, if you're trail running uphill, 
that's that's very different in some respects than ski touring uphill. And when you're ski touring, you need to think about those strength components and carrying the weight uh, and the movement that's a little bit different. Uh, so having all of those, being conscious of what all those pieces are helps you develop a really good plan. So one of the questions I'm dying to ask you is um, how much work would someone have to put in to have like kind of an average person's aerobic threshold like I have to push it to 10% um, or within 10% of the lactic threshold? Like how much work does yeah. it take? Uh, you know, it's it's one of those questions where the answer is it depends. Um, it, it, <laughs> yeah, yeah I'd, I'd like to tell you, you know, three months yens, you do that and you're going to be there. Um, but, you know, it depends on a lot of factors. It depends on on how much time you can put in each day. Uh, and, and then it also depends on how well you recover because, you know, the, the training volume that you put in is only part of the puzzle. You have to, you have to put the training volume in and then your body has to be able to recover from it. Um, in many cases, if not all cases, the, uh, the real distinction in terms of developing as an athlete is, is how well you can balance the stress you put on your body through training with recovering really well, um, and recovering involves, you know, your diet, how well you eat, uh, your sleep. Can you, are you getting enough sleep at night? Are you doing the things for your body after training that support adapting to that training load, such as mm -hmm. good mobility and good, um, you know, good, good health habits, you know, staying, staying healthy, not getting sick, uh, minimizing stress and other aspects of your life. So there's all those pieces that come into play in terms of how rapidly your fitness grows. Um, honestly, as well, everybody is different. Some people adapt really quickly to training and, and absorb it really well and quickly. Other people, it takes a little bit longer. It's their, for one reason or another, their, uh, their physiology is perhaps a little bit more resistant to those quick adaptations or, uh, just inclined toward other things. And so it takes a little bit more to get you there. Uh, you know, I think from where you're at now, uh, if you gave it, you know, six months of dedicated training and, and we can talk more specifically about hours per week and things like that, uh, you would see noticeable gains, not only out on the trail and on the skin track, you'd feel different, but if you were to go back in and do a lab test again, you would see improvements in those numbers. Absolutely. Um, hard to say whether that would be within that 10% range, but it would be a lot closer than where it is now. Yeah. And because uh, I can imagine that the ten percent range is kind of hard to achieve. It that we're talking kind of elite level athletes or, or like very well trained hobby people like myself. I'm not very well yeah. trained but hobby. <laughs> yeah. No. And, and it that you know that yeah, exactly. I think that the ten percent idea that uh, that's been developed and and sort of heralded over time as a uh, good representation of aerobic capacity comes from observing athletes at at a high level and and what those margins are for them and in most cases those are people who have been doing this for 5 10 15 years they've been building up that fitness and not to say that it takes that long to do but it is just a it's a progressive incremental process uh, it, it takes a long time for the body to adapt, to be able to train more. And then you go and you train more and then you're able to train more and so on and so forth in this stair step mm -hmm. manner. 